Imagine gazing into the vastness of space and suddenly realizing it's staring back. That is precisely what researchers felt when the James Webb Space Telescope, the strongest I ever made, launched into space and detected something completely unexpected. This was no ordinary distant galaxy nor a beautiful nebula to add to NASA's image gallery. What it found was a set of signals, patterns, and anomalies that defied every rule we thought we comprehended about the universe. At first glance, it all seemed random. But the deeper they looked, the more it all began to feel deliberate, structured, and some would even say intelligent. For several decades, we believed that the universe was uncaring about our existence, a cold, endless void governed by physics and chance. However, what if we were wrong all along? What if, concealed in the silence of deep space, there are messages waiting to be found? Messages that we were never supposed to see. Today, we dive into the latest data from the James Webb Space Telescope, data so shocking, so unprecedented, that some astronomers are beginning to ask the unthinkable. Are we finally witnessing evidence that we are not alone? The journey began with an unexpected anomaly close to home. James Webb was pointed toward Neptune, one of the ice giants at the edge of our solar system, a planet so distant and cold that it frequently appears frozen in time and space. However, Webb saw something that changed decades of scientific comprehension. Compared to the data collected by the Voyager to fly by in 1989 and recent Earth-based telescopes, Neptune's upper atmosphere had dropped in temperature significantly not over millennia or centuries, but within the last few decades. The readings made little sense. Parts of the atmosphere had cooled by nearly 10 degrees Celsius without any clear cause. Solar cycles didn't explain it. Internal heat fluctuations didn't either. And here's the unsettling part. Webb also detected unusual shifts in Neptune's magnetosphere, subtle but real like a silent pulse from a heart we never knew was beating. Could an outside force be influencing the planet? A passing gravitational anomaly? A change in dark matter density? Or is something even stranger happening? Something that affects planets silently across unimaginable distances? The data was the first door, and behind it was more than ice. It was mystery. While the anomaly around Neptune stirred unease, what James Webb found in the TRAPPIST-1 system was enough to make scientists reconsider their entire approach to exoplanetary science. TRAPPIST-1, located just 39 light-years away, is well known for hosting seven rocky planets, three of which orbit within the system's habitable zone. But Webb didn't just confirm their potential, it revealed something far more profound. Using infrared spectroscopy, Webb identified the distinctive spectral signatures of water vapor in the atmospheres of at least two of those planets, TRAPPIST-1d and TRAPPIST-1e. And this wasn't just trace amounts. The data suggested dense, humid atmospheres, possibly with cloud systems resembling Earth's. Combined with temperature profiles and orbital resonance patterns, the most likely scenario was this. Global oceans, deep, stable, and ancient. Even more stunning was the finding of molecular markers and compounds resembling ozone, which on Earth are linked to biological processes. It's not proof of life, but it's the closest we've ever come to finding the right circumstances to support it. And not just once, but twice, on two different planets in the same star system. Imagine it. A miniature solar system with not one, but multiple Earth-like worlds circling quietly in the darkness. No longer theoretical targets, they are real, vibrant, and potentially alive. As the revelations crept closer to our cosmic neighborhood, James Webb turned its gaze to far more ancient lands. In one of its deepest surveys, it captured light from a galaxy known as Jade's GSZ-1320, one of the oldest ever observed, formed just 330 million years after the Big Bang. But it wasn't just the galaxy's existence that puzzled researchers. It was the radiation, Lyman Alpha emission, a frequency usually absorbed by clouds of neutral hydrogen in the early universe. 
And yet, this signal was far too strong, far too clear, as if the hydrogen had already been ionized, allowing the light to travel without restriction. This completely overturns what we thought we knew about the epoch of reionization, the era when the universe transitioned from darkness to light. If this galaxy emitted that radiation at such a time, it suggests something else could have sped up the process, something massive or intelligent. Was it just natural variation, or something more deliberate, such as the early fingerprints of galactic engineering, or an unknown source of energy that ignited the universe before it was prepared? The implications are staggering. It's no longer just about what happened. It's about why and who, if anyone, was present to bring it about. As the telescope shifted its gaze to white dwarf systems, stars that have already died, scientists expected only debris, silence, and ruin. But that's not what Webb found. Instead, it discovered planets that refused to die. In the system WD1856-534, Webb detected a massive gas planet orbiting just a few million kilometers from a star that had already collapsed into a white dwarf. This shouldn't be possible. The transformation of a sun into a white dwarf usually destroys everything nearby. Yet, here was a planet all intact and apparently achieving equilibrium. What stunned researchers most was what they saw in the planet's upper atmosphere. Webb's instruments picked up traces of vaporized water, sulfur compounds, and other chemical markers suggesting regeneration of the atmosphere. Somehow, the planet had adapted to remain alive after its host star died. This changed everything. The traditional premise of life and habitability. That once a star dies, so too does any chance for life around it was shattered. But what if that's not true? What if civilizations or ecosystems built around dying stars could adjust to less light, sustained by alternative energy sources? If some planets can survive death, then maybe some forms of life can too. And suddenly, white dwarfs, once emblems of cosmic finality, became symbols of resilience. Cosmic endings might just be the best places to look for intelligent life enduring in the ashes of ancient worlds. While the web has been digging into the dark cosmos, it's also been turning its attention to the shadowy corners of our own solar system. One of the most recent focal points, Uranus's outer moons and Neptune's satellites long believed to be dormant, cold rocks with little scientific curiosity. However, Webb's discoveries told a very different story. Through infrared mapping, the telescope detected thermal signatures on several small moons that shouldn't have any internal activity at all. Tiny, irregular satellites like Hippocamp or Despina displayed heat patterns far above the expected baseline indicating geology or cryovolcanic activity beneath their icy surfaces. Even more perplexing, Webb's spectrometers found hints of complex carbon compounds on their surface as possible organic precursors. The immediate inquiry was, how could so many tiny frozen bodies orbiting far away from the sun maintain internal energy over a billion years? Some theorized the presence of radioactive decay. Others suggest tidal heating. But neither explains the level of organization in the discovered compounds, which raises a third possibility, external seeding. Could something have delivered these compounds? Could these moons be relics of something previous? Web sensors then caught something no one expected from a galaxy well known for decades, Messier 82, also called the Cigar Galaxy. Astronomers had already classified this galaxy as a starburst zone intensely active, filled with supernovae and stars forming at an abnormally fast pace. But now, James Webb found something deeper, an infrared pulse repeating at fixed intervals coming from its central region. Not noise. Not interference. A warning sign. This infrared signal had structure mathematical spacing, rhythm, and duration consistent with artificial modulation. No official conclusions have been drawn, but some scientists working behind the scenes have already compared it to earlier SETI templates used to search for alien transmissions. Could it be the result of a highly energetic natural phenomenon like a neutron star? Possibly. 
But nothing in the visible or X-ray spectrum matches the signature, which raises a dreadful possibility. What if we're seeing the decay trail of something that once transmitted a signal? A message not to us, but one we were never meant to intercept. Remember Tabby's star, also known as KIC 8462852, the awe-inspiring celestial body whose rays fluctuated in ways no one expected sparking speculation about alien megastructures. Webb took a closer look. The discovery didn't solve the mystery, it deepened it. Webb's exact photometric data revealed that the dimming events weren't caused by dust, debris, or comets. Instead, thin, opaque objects seemed to pass in front of the star at geometrically consistent intervals. Objects that were flat, angular, possibly enormous. The fluctuations suggested structures orbiting in layers or swarms. Natural explanations are still on the table like unusual planetary ring systems, but so far, no explanation fits with complete satisfaction. Webb's thermal sensors also picked up waste heat in the surrounding region, a small, steady infrared glow that doesn't match the star's output as if something were harvesting energy and radiating the leftovers. The term Dyson Swarm is being uttered once more not as science fiction, but as an actual working hypothesis. Lastly, James Webb turned its optics to AL2744, the Pandora's cluster. This chaotic conglomerate of galaxies has always fascinated astronomers due to its gravitational lensing, allowing us to see galaxies from the earliest universe. But this time, something unexpected appeared in the lens. In one corner of the observation, shadows passed across a background star cluster, not once but multiple times during long exposures. These weren't mistakes in the instrument. They were actual occultation events meaning something moved in front of the distant source of light. But here's the mystery, nothing visible cast those shadows. Whatever passed through the lens did not emit light. It did not reflect it. It was only known through what it blocked. Based on the speed, size, and recurrence, Webb's team believes these large but gloomy objects could exist possibly stealth satellites or more exotically, non-reflective megastructures. This isn't just missing matter. This is something more organized, more mechanical, perhaps a technology that conceals itself by using the very physics we thought we understood. What the James Webb Telescope is revealing isn't just beauty, science, or wonder. It's something more substantial, something almost unthinkable, a series of signs scattered across space and time. Each one goes beyond the scope of what we know, whispering the same silent question. What if space has never been empty? What if we've been observed all along, from the icy recesses of Neptune's moons to the structured pulses of distant galaxies? From the potential oceans on Trappist worlds to the dark silhouettes moving behind cosmic curtains, Webb hasn't just opened a new eye toward the universe, it has retracted a veil. A veil we never knew was there, one that may have been put in place for a reason. And now, there's no turning back. We stand on the edge of a discovery that could redefine our species, a realization that the universe is not only vast, but possibly aware observing, reacting, or even issuing a warning. Here's the truth, this is merely the beginning.